Welcome to Cognautics, your one-stop shop for computer science and IT. Like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell to be the first to see new content. Today's video, it's all about saving you time and effort when you need to learn big chunks of material for assessments or exams. So we're going to be looking today at the concept of mind palaces, which go back over two and a half thousand years. The idea is really simple. You take a piece of knowledge and you store it in a place and that makes it much easier to access when you then need to use it in assessments or exams later on. So it's a really effective way of learning big chunks of material. Let's have a look at what we're going to be using to put in our mind palace today. This is about system security threats and mitigation. So you need to know what the threats are and how to resolve them. We'll look at social engineering to start off with and then move on to data interception or theft. From there, we'll look at the SQL injections and then move on to brute force attacks. Our next area is DDoS attacks and then we'll move on to malicious code in all of its forms. So this is the house where we're gonna place this information. It's a nice looking house, isn't it? So let's dive into the hallway and think about where we're gonna put these chunks of information so we can access them when we need them in an exam situation. So here's the layout. We've got the hall, the lounge, the kitchen, a bathroom, a bedroom, and a study. And use your own home for this if it's easier for you. So let's jump into the hall. As you go in, you get your feet wet straight away. There's a paddling pool, and there's a boy who's got a fishing rod, and guess what? He's doing fishing. And of course, a phishing scam is when you click on a link from an email, and then you end up downloading malicious code. See how the boy is wearing a hard hat, and that's because this is social engineering. So that's the fishing dealt with. On the left hand side, have a look at the cash point. The woman is taking some money out of a cash point and the bad guy, you can tell, he's wearing a black and white striped t-shirt and he's got a swag bag. He is looking over her shoulder so he can find out what her password is and then he can gain access to her account later on. So how can you mitigate against this? Well, now there's a staff meeting going on in the left hand corner of the room. So staff training is one way you can mitigate against this. Another is to ban access to certain websites. Let's now move on to the bathroom. We've got two little bulls who are playing in the bathroom and they are sending data to each other. And that raccoon with the net, his job is to try to intercept the data. So what can you do to prevent this? Well, you can turn the plain text into cipher text by using something called encryption, which means you scramble the data, rendering the data useless, even if it is intercepted. So let's move on into the bedroom where a man's receiving a painful SQL, a structured query language injection. And this usually means that someone's tagging on some SQL code to a username or password to gain unauthorized access or higher level access to a system. How can you ensure it doesn't happen? Data validation and that's checking that the username and passwords are only username and passwords. Then we go to the study and there's a woman carrying out a brute force attack. She's trying to gain access to a system by using combinations of usernames and passwords. So what can you do to mitigate against this type of attack? Well, first of all, you can use long passwords with combinations of letters and numbers and special characters. You can also make sure you change your passwords regularly. Another approach is to use biometrics. So you could go for a fingerprint scanner or a retina scanner. Now we're into the kitchen for the DDoS attack, a complex attack which you need to look here to find out about. Monitoring is the way that you can solve this, is by monitoring the system and also using forensics after the event. In the lounge, we've got the Trojan horse. A Trojan horse attack is really a means. It's a, it's a method of delivering a virus rather than being an attack in its own right. So this might be used in combination with other attacks. Now we make our way to the garden to meet Malcolm the malware dog. So all of these threats we're gonna talk about now, they come under the umbrella of malware. Let's start by looking at the virus, the most common one. It deletes or corrupts files, it destroys data. We'll then go on and look at worms. Worms, you can see these worms have rubber bands around them because they soak up bandwidth. They take up bandwidth and they slow a system down to the point where it's unusable. The next threat we'll look at is the idea of a ransomware attack where your files are encrypted and you've got to pay a financial sum 
in order to have your files unlocked. It's an incredibly common attack. And lastly, we will have a look at the adware attack. And that's where ads simply pop up on your screen. It tends to be more annoying than it is dangerous to your system, but equally it can slow your system down hugely. So what can you actually do to prevent against all of these types of malware? Firstly, you can install antivirus software. It'll locate the virus and destroy it or quarantine it. It's also important to keep your virus definitions up to date. You usually take out a subscription for this because as viruses are released, the companies will then get the data on the type of file, the site of the file, and then that means that your antivirus software has got a better chance of recognizing new viruses as they appear. Another approach is to ban the use of USB drives. USB drives are very small, very portable, and very easy to carry data. The difficulty is it's also very easy to introduce a virus to a system using a USB drive. And with the advent of cloud computing, they aren't really necessary anymore. The last approach is to ban the use of certain websites. Here you've got a choice of whitelisting or blacklisting. Blacklisting meaning that you ban certain sites only, and whitelisting means that you ban all sites apart from a certain select few. So those are your approaches to preventing malware. Let's now whiz through our malware house at breakneck speed. We start in the hallway where we've got social engineering, the boy with the hard hat who's got the paddling pool for fishing and we've got the shoulder surfing with the cash point. Picture those two elements there. Then we move into the bathroom where we've got the two bulls and the raccoon and we've got data interception going on in the bath. And think about how you prevent that. The SQL injection going on in the bedroom with data validation as the mitigation. Then jump into the study and think about using long passwords, combinations of letters and numbers, locking people out after a certain number of attempts and biometrics to ensure that we keep people out. We jump into the kitchen with our DDoS attacks and think about monitoring the system and about network forensics to find out what went wrong after the event. The Trojan horse, don't forget, that's just the delivery method. There it is sitting in the lounge. Make it pink if you like, it might be easier to remember. It's a payload delivery system. We then jump into the garden with Malcolm the malware dog welcoming us to the garden and all of the threats that we have out there. We've got the virus and again, anti-malware. We've got worms taking up bandwidth, anti-malware, adware. Again, annoying, but use anti-malware. So that's the mind palace around system threats. Try to use it. It will take time to put those ideas inside your head, but once they're there, you can access the locations and the ideas in an exam situation when you most need them. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to be the first to find out about new content. Bye bye.